Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. We're glad to have you with us. Our organist is Richard Elliott and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Richard begins his program with the arrangement by George Dyson of the hymn, God Moves in a Mysterious Way. But it's not the hymn tune sung most frequently to those words today. It's the tune named London New, which is actually an old melody, first published in 1635. Benjamin Britten had also used this tune of God Moves in a Mysterious Way in 1948 in his cantata, St. Nicholas. And Dyson published his organ arrangement of London New in his Variations on Old Psalm Tunes of 1960. The earliest score of Bach's Prelude in C Major from BWV 547 dates from his time in Leipzig, his last posting at the end of his career. Now, Bach might have composed this prelude earlier in his career, some scholars have suggested 1719, and just made a copy in Leipzig. Or he might have composed it new in Leipzig. We don't know. But whenever it was, it must have been when he was in a contented state of mind. With its jaunty 9-8 meter, I think this prelude smiles all the way through. After that musical paragraph of cheerfulness, we'll hear the Benedictus from Opus 59 of Max Reger from 1901. It's a little more solemn, certainly, but I think no less sanguine than Bach's prelude. While we can't categorically assign a thought, feeling, or emotion to BWV 547, Rega's Benedictus does come with a direct association to a liturgical text. As the King James Version puts it, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Rega's Benedictus might not swing its shoulders as cheerily as Bach's prelude, 
but the calm and confident assurance of blessing permeates this whole piece.
Following the tradition of these organ concerts from Temple Square, Richard plays next his own arrangement of the Latter-day Saint hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, and an old melody, which today is an especially old melody, the hymn tune, All Through the Night. This tune was first published in 1784 and was even then regarded as a musical relic of the Welsh bards. Who knows how old it really is. First though, come, come ye saints.
The German poet and philosopher Friedrich Schiller penned his poem An die Freude, or To Joy, in the summer of 1784. He didn't think it was a particularly good poem and later in life regarded it as something of a failure, a poem of limited use to anyone outside his own close circle. Schiller unfortunately didn't live long enough to see his words become part of the powerful and profound conclusion to Beethoven's Symphony No. 9. Schiller died in 1805. Beethoven completed his Ninth Symphony in 1824. Other composers, both before and after Beethoven, have written musical settings of Schiller's Ode to Joy as well. And other hymn writers have adapted Beethoven's melody as a hymn tune. When used as a hymn, the official tune name is Hymn to Joy. The first of these hymns to joy appeared in 1907, when American author Henry Van Dyke penned and published the words, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, set to Beethoven's rousing melody. Although they're connected by the theme of joy, Van Dyke's text is quite different from Schiller's. The imagery in the hymn to joy rests on two powerful ideas. God's joy is expressed to us through nature, and our joy in God is returned through our appreciation of nature, through music, through coming together in love and living in harmony with each other. Van Dyke was inspired by the natural beauty of the Berkshire Mountains in Western Massachusetts when he penned in the second stanza, All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blooming meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. But while recognizing the divine in nature is an admirable purpose, the more powerful message of the hymn to joy is to recognize the divine within ourselves and each other. Only by acknowledging that fundamental shared identity will we prevail over the forces that seek to divide and alienate us from our neighbor. As Van Dyck conveyed it in the final lines of his hymn to joy, Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. We'll hear now some of that joyful music that accompanies the triumph song of life as Richard concludes his concert today with his own organ arrangement of the Hymn to Joy.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up, featuring tabernacle organist Richard Elliott. We're so glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.